Okay, so today we're looking at the Logitech Brio 500 webcam. We're going to take a look at kind of its default settings, what it can do out of the box, and also how we can tweak the image to make it look the best it possibly can. So stay tuned for that and let's go. So this is a brand new or fairly new camera from Logitech. You can see it's got a manual and physical privacy shutter that you can tell whether or not the camera is on and pointed at you. The other thing that's kind of cool with the new Logitech Brio 500 is it lets you swivel the mount of the camera so you can get the right frame in. Um, it's also got a different type of mounting mechanism in terms of the the way that the um, mo monitor and the, the camera will attach to the monitor. It has kind of a multi-angle, multi-axis uh, way of mounting it with uh, adhesive material here that you'll use to put onto the back of the monitor so it mounts firmly in place. And that's because it has a tilt mount on the top so you can tilt it down to your desk when it's on your monitor so you can get those uh, kind of top-down desk shots. One thing to note, it is USB-C on the end but it is a fixed cable on the back. And depending on how far your computer is from your monitor or where you're mounting the camera, you'll need to figure that out. Also. You cannot use, or there is no quarter 20 mounting on the bottom of the mount for this camera. Okay, so now that you've seen the camera, let's take a look at how well it performs, both in its default settings and tuned. Okay, so this is the Logitech Brio 500 with all the default settings using the default microphone, just so you can get an idea of what it looks like and what it sounds like. All right, so after a bit of tuning, I was able to get this image out of the Logitech Brio 500. Let me just go through some of the settings that I set. So first of all, I noticed that the focus was hunting a bit in and out. I think it doesn't like the screen I've got behind me, and maybe it's confusing that for an eye. So I manually focused it against my eyes, zoomed in basically using OBS. Now the other thing I did was manually set the exposure. I felt, felt it was a little bit too much on the hot side in terms of exposure, so I toned that down a little bit. Now in terms of the um, field of view, I left it at 90 because I think uh, it's a digital zoom, so I didn't want to lose any resolution going into 78 or 60. Even though the camera is actually pretty close to me, um, it's probably 18 inches or so from my head. All right, now in terms of the video settings that I set, I moved the brightness up to 56%. The contrast is at about 70%. Sharpness is at 54%. I manually adjusted the white balance. I also adjusted saturation down just a little bit to 47% and kept the anti-flicker settings at 60 hertz for the US. Now. The other thing I did, which is kind of brand new to OBS and kind of to fix the microphone, which just seemed a little bit on the bright side, was I used the brand new OBS uh, three band filter, or sorry, three band equalizer filter, which basically let me bring up the low tones by three decibels. I think it needed just a little bit there. Um, I thought the rest of the vocal range was actually pretty solid, so left left uh, the rest as it was. Also turned on the kind of default settings for compressor in OBS, didn't mess with anything there. And turned on noise suppression, just so in case there's any fans or other room noise, that the noise suppression would be there to help with the microphone. So those are the tune settings. I didn't change anything else in the camera settings um, using filters in OBS. These are just default from G-Hub. All right, so before I conclude all of the different testing with software and some of the settings on the Logitech Brio 500, I also decided to put it through NVIDIA Broadcast for the minimum amount of background blur so you can get the bokeh effect behind me. It looks about like an f1.8 lens on, say, my full-frame camera or on my APS-C cameras as well. And again, this is with NVIDIA Broadcast. Again, with from an image perspective, I tuned most of that in G-Hub and the microphone just a little bit in terms of OBS settings with some of the default filters and the brand new reband equalizer filter with just a 3 dB bump on the low end. So again, that was the Logitech Brio 500. My kind of overall review of that, I would say it's a great camera, has probably the best white balance uh, and kind of image quality, even though it's not 4K. 
of a lot of the others in the Logitech range. It is a 30 frame per second camera, so if you're looking for 60 frames per second, you're gonna wanna get the stream cam. But I would say in terms of things like white balance, uh, what you can tune out of the box with the Logitech camera settings apps, and there are a few of them that you can use. For me, it's the strongest of the Logitech cameras at the moment in, in those different regards. Now, once you layer on additional tuning that you can do through OBS for the audio, for example, like I did with the microphone to give it a little bit more low end, and also NVIDIA Broadcast in order to give that background blur and bokeh effect, kind of like you're seeing now, with my full frame camera and f1.8 lens you can do all of that on top of you know what's basically a pretty solid camera other things to point out is it is using recycled materials um, so it's great from that perspective as well in terms of carbon neutrality and you know it from its price point perspective it's around 129 dollars now i was able to find mine for somewhere closer to 70 dollars but I think from a price point perspective, I would say it's a little bit on the high side for what it is given it's a 1080p camera. But that said, you know, the fact that you can tilt it down and look at your desk and it's got a better mount, the cameras, um, microphones that are built in are probably some of the best that are available on a webcam today. It's certainly close to being worth the $130 MSRP price point. But I would, I would probably say look for uh, that price to drop a little bit uh, in time and once you see a deal, you know, in the $70 to $90 price range, I think it's well worth that. And it's probably still worth, you know, $130, just given, again, the, the kind of the microphone quality. So hopefully this helps as you navigate remote work uh, or some of the streaming activities that you're doing. This helps in terms of your future webcam purchases. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. And also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.